Welcome to Another Line. I'm Christine Williams, coming up for discussion and our Viewpoints Hour. Cystic fibrosis dropped from a charity for not being inclusive enough. A teen commits suicide over the internet and a new British law to prevent forced marriages. Stay tuned. And these are the issues we're presenting today to our Viewpoints guests for commentary. The Carleton University Students Association has decided to drop a cystic fibrosis charity as part of a fundraiser because it is not inclusive enough since it is a disease affecting white people. The dark side of electronic technology rearing its head more and more. The most recent case, a U.S. teen commits suicide on the internet while onlookers urged him on. And a new British law to prevent forced marriages. Now let's meet our Viewpoints guest. Dr. Anthony Hutchinson is CEO of the Brampton Neighborhood Resource Center and Alexandra Fick is a Brock University professor. And you, the viewer, as always, you are our third guest. Feel free to call in at any time about any one of the subject matters we're presenting today. And we'd love to hear from you, so call in early. Now take a look at the first topic that we're talking about. It's entitled... Students say disease not inclusive enough. Now we want to hear what your thoughts are regarding this one because lately we've been seeing more and more on the university campuses and not just there. I would say society in general, this whole thing about inclusiveness to the point of being, some would say too much politically correct. And this particular article pertains to a fundraising venture by Carleton University, and the Students Association has voted to remove cystic fibrosis from one of the illnesses being raised money for because it's not inclusive enough. It's been found that it's a white disease, Caucasian. So how does that sound to you? And I'm going to start with you on this one, Anthony. I think... Uh our universities are becoming bastions of idiocy uh, in, in terms of um, <laughs> what's actually going on and what takes place at them. I remember in the good old days, universities where you respected professors and the students respected those, and we respected the causes that we were trying to build a better society. Now it seems like special interests are, are just completely taking over in terms of everything. We talk about inclusivity to the point that leads to exclusion. Um, so hmm. as much as we talk about inclusion, we're going to exclusion. And, and that's one of these cases. As a matter of fact, this particular student council was acting on incorrect information. Cystic fibrosis impacts people regardless of gender, re regardless of their ethnocultural background. It was, yes. it, was, it was found that the student council, actually one of their members represented it wrongfully in terms of uh, to the rest of their council and they voted to, to take it off their, their charitable list. So here you have hearsay um, which I is being acted out at, at, on the student government level and, and as a result our very good charity and a very worthwhile and yes. needed cause is being put um, on the margins and that's not inclusion, that's exclusion. Mm -hmm. Alexandra, your thoughts on well, this one? And, and of course it's a broader issue of the yeah, whole political it, it, correctness it, it, it that we is, want to cover today. It is. I, I think they are getting a lot of flack because of that. The, I, I, I have not read anything that has come out and supported that position. But I think uh, I would agree with my colleague that they, before going for this resolution, they could have Googled something. I mean, they are at the computers all the time. Well, hit Google and see what it tells you. First of all, it is not a white man's disease. They are, they are yes. absolutely wrong. But first, I'd like to say, now, can you imagine if somebody would have said, well, we are dropping this because it's a black man's disease. Like sickle cell anemia. Yeah, it, whatever. Exactly. All, all hell would have broken loose. I mm -hmm. mean, every you, me, everybody they could see would have been called racist. They would have put boards around our neck here goes the racist you see so that's one point that I would like to get it out but I think they have not understood the whole concept of charity charity means that you give it from your heart you give it to anybody who needs it uh, you don't have any ulterior motives and you don't expect anything in return that's the beauty of charity but when you have a hidden agenda behind it Christine, it's no longer a charity. 
it becomes a political act, and then we will not even call it a charity. See, Alexandra, you're a professor yourself on a campus at Brock University, and we're seeing a pattern here. Mm -hmm. Recently at Queen's University, students were hired to actually eavesdrop, and yes, that's what it amounts to, that was conversations going on on the yeah. campus. Mm -hmm. And what was behind this was, they were looking for, which I think it's insulting to people's intelligence, teachable moments. Nonsense. For instance, you hear two students discussing issues regarding ethnics, or and, and they were identified. Mm -hmm. or, or the gay movement mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you figure as a person listening, as one of those hired, mm -hmm. this is a teachable moment. Let, let, me, let me interject this into this conversation here. Let me interrupt mm -hmm. and put my own views in because it's a diverse culture, a diverse society, and we're seeing this so more what? and more on the campuses. Yes. What's you your feedback to you, this? You see the, what people have forgotten, that universities are marketplaces of ideas. That's where students come to learn. That's where we debate things. That's where we look at the issues. We analyze issues. We dissect issues. We learn from each other. And if somebody is, you know, making a statement, he may be incorrect, but I would defend his right to say that. Perhaps call that student later on into my office and say, well, perhaps you should look at this thing also. But what is classroom all about? Indoctrination or examination yes. of ideas? Now, for the two of you, and I want to hear both of your feedbacks on this, it's time that the gloves come off because Absolutely. we're sitting here talking about diversity here, and it just keeps on coming up hitting the front pages more and more, and some of these harebrained ideas that are coming yeah. out of the campuses and in society in general. You see? In my opinion, I want to hear your feedback. It's causing more division yes. because it makes visible minorities look like idiots. And I'd like to know how the two of you feel about this. We've swung so far on the pendulum of political correctness and appeasing special interests that we've lost all sense of what it means to be a society, one of, of unity working together towards some form of com common aspiration. I've talked to many people over the last few months um, saying, what is a Canadian identity? Um, you know, if you go to any country in the world, you will um, adapt or, or integrate into their national identity. We had one, and I was born in Canada, and I grew up with one, but somehow over the last 20 years, it's lost. It, it says, well, it's whatever it is. And, 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 and as a result, you lose something as your nation. So I think in this, in this, this struggle for political correctness, you know, we, we've, we've completely overstepped. What does it mean? People came to Canada for opportunity, for education, yes, for, for access to health care. Th those were the kind of things that, you know, but yet we've, we've now, we're, we're, we're opposing um, contributing to cystic fibrosis, which has everything to do with health care. And, 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 you know, and, 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 and making us well. And, and yeah, you're right, we could, we could look at something as sickle cell anemia. You know, um, that impacts uh, predominantly a lot of people from, from Afro-Caribbean backgrounds and so forth. And, and so what is that? Is that one not inclusive enough? Well, you know, they could have used the same argument. We run a slippery slope yes, we when, when, we're, when, we, when we're, we're, we're focusing on special interests without what I would say evidence-based um, rationality. And, and unfortunately, that's where we're going. Yes, you see, Alexandra. the thing is that there is a whole school of psychology out there called ethnotherapy. Where, hmm. which has examined that how certain disorders or whatever are little more common in one group than in another. At this point, naming those groups would be, would be meaningless. But I think Canada seems to be going through that phases of picking up a word and beating it to death until nothing comes of it. Uh, for example, first it was multiculturalism. Oh, oh, oh maybe we should be careful. Then came racism. Oh, 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 we should be careful about that one. Now comes diversity. Diversity, diver diversity of what? To where? Where are we going? We are in it together. And at university, to say that you can't say this or you can't say that, hmm. loses the very purpose of university education, yes. which is diametrically opposed to indoctrination. That's it right. To now learn new things. Now it's time for a break. And if you're just tuning in, well, Carleton University Students Association has voted to get cystic fibrosis off the list for one of the charities when it comes to fundraising because it's not inclusive enough. Why? Because it's seen as a white disease. We want to hear your thoughts. What do you think of where we're going when it comes to inclusiveness, political correctness? We want to hear your thoughts, so call in at any time. In fact, we're going to get straight to you on the phone lines after the break. Stay tuned.
Hello again. Welcome back to Viewpoints on the Line. We're continuing to talk about our first topic. And if you take a look at the headline again, students say disease not inclusive enough. Once again, we're talking about cystic fibrosis here, deemed a white disease and not inclusive enough for the Student Association at Carleton to cover under their plan of fundraising. Now, we want to know what you think about not just this story, but in general, do you think that this whole area of political correctness has, in some cases, gone too far? Let's go now to you, Andy, on line four. Hello, Andy. You're on the line. Hi, Christine, and a special hello to Dr. Fick. I really love when she's on with you. <laughs> Anyways, my point is, okay, uh, my, uh, my sister went to Queens, I went to Carleton, and they were, you know, they're, pr they're pretty parallel in terms of political correctness. And my sister was totally indoctrinated with this, uh, you know, dead white male opinion, okay? And, uh, you know, t I don't have to comment anymore. I don't have to comment anymore and, uh, how, sh uh, how her lifestyle has changed, okay? And, you know, like I'm totally agog. I mean, they, you know, like, uh, like even male professors at Carleton were t are doctrinating against men as well. You know, so I, you know, I'm still scratching my head, and I'm 53 years old. I'm almost bald <laughs> for scratching. Andy, thanks for calling in. Uh, any feedback here on what Andy's saying? Well, but universities shouldn't be indoctrinating. That's that's the, my point from the right from the beginning. This is not the function of the university. Universities are supposed to teach facts, yes. learning skills, analytical skills thinking skills and prepare them for the world of future. If you want to indoctrinate them, then go and teach in China and Russia. That's where you will have a job. <laughs> Let's go down to Annex on line one. Hello, you're on the line. Go ahead, line one. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, I'm calling about the cystic fibrosis. Yes. I am totally disgusted yes. uh, on so what these can... people are saying. I have two grandchildren, both with CF. Sorry to hear that. And uh, I would want them to go and live the life of a child having cystic fibrosis in a day, what goes on in their life. And it's yes. nothing to do with your color or what race you are. If you have a disease, you have a disease. Exactly. And exactly. it is such a pitiful disease. They're my two grandkids. And uh, like I said, it, it's a struggle to keep them healthy, to yes. keep them breathing. When you see a little child that can't breathe and you've got to put a machine on to bring up the mucus, you'll know how heartbreaking it is. And it's, I'm so glad you called in. It was great to hear from you because you certainly highlighted the issue the way it should be. I yeah, mean, all yeah. of us sitting here are in agreement with you. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, and it's Let's go now to Kathy on line five. Hello, Kathy. You're on the line. Yes, hi. How are you? I Fine, watch you every you. day. It's a wonderful show. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, my, I couldn't have said it any better than the lady before me. A disease is a disease, mm -hmm. whether you are black, white, or whatever. And don't these guys at universities have better things to do than uh, forever going over things. The same with Queen's University the other day. I say lighten up and grow up. Yes, Kathy, yeah. well said. Yeah. There's an underlying issue I, I'd like to hear both of you address, and it has to do with the whole issue of inclusiveness. At the heart of this movement, at least I'd like to believe this is at the heart of the movement, is to recognize that as a human race, mm -hmm. we're all part of the same human race. Absolutely. But what's happening is that we're seeing, in my opinion, certain special interest groups mm -hmm. raise, raise a, a storm that, in my opinion, it's creating more division. Mm -hmm. Because I can't tell you how many, I've gotten letters, I've heard people talking about it. How many white people are now saying, I'm sick of this. Yes. I'm starting to feel like a victim yeah, here. Yeah, and, yeah. and I want to know how the two of you feel about it, this. It, it's, it's become a crime in, in Canadian universities to be um, a Christian. Uh, you could be anything else, but you can't be that. And if Ac you're a white Christian, yeah, hey. Then you're even more screwed. And I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> academic freedom is the biggest joke across Canada in our, in our institutions. It is about indoctrination. They've become a flourishing ground for special interests unfettered and untapped. Um, you know, it's really easy for university professors to stand up um, on, on, on their podiums and say they're socialists uh, when they're getting paid $100,000, $200,000, or $300,000 in salaries. You know, so in 
terms of the messages, we know we're talking about um, you know shortages in our education system. But when you look at the the capital costs and the high uh, salaries of, of of professors, you know, and then and then poor students are are are, are scratching and, and fighting to pay their tuition, and then and then being misguided to boot. So I think that we need to get serious about where our um, education system in Canada is going. It's broken um, yes. in elementary school. Yes. It's br it, it, it's shattered in high school. And quite frankly, universities aren't doing a heck of a lot to shore it up uh, anymore. And then we really need to think about that because we're going mm -hmm. down a downhill mm -hmm. spiral. Yeah. Yes, comments about yeah, but you know, I, I won't comment on the education because that mm -hmm. isn't the issue. We could be out there. But I think diversity may have some place somewhere. I don't know. I mean, there there's God somewhere there. I accept that. But when it comes to charity, and when it comes to helping people who need help, then color of the skin and gender and race and all of that should Doesn't not matter. even Doesn't be an matter. issue. It's no. not an, as I said, you are doing it from the goodness of your heart. And you are doing something very good. Once you bring in those conditions, you have lost the purpose of your objective. Mm -hmm. you, have, you are lost now. And once you don't know which way to take, you are definitely lost. And therefore, when it comes to these things, that, like helping someone, uh, cystic fibrosis, anything, then what is your objective? Now, there's one thing I want to say as well, because I, I, I don't want to condemn everyone at Carleton. This particular article refers to the fundraiser as Shinerama fundraiser. They're and going to the, the CEO, the, yeah. the chief executive, the shoes, yes. Kathleen Morrison, is appalled that the, the Student Association has decided to exclude but cystic fibrosis. So you're seeing division here. It's not all of Carlton. No, I want to get that straight. The, the, the vote went 17-2. Yes, that was the exactly. Vote. And there's so, a problem here yes, with the Student Association. So, so it's the problem of the students. I mean, here they yes. are sitting behind computers all day. Why didn't you look up what cystic fibrosis is all about? This shows ignorance. It does. This shows high-handedness. It's insulting. This shows, mm -hmm. you know, dictatorial kind of an attitude. And if I was at Carlton, at the cost of losing my job, I would haul them in my office. Mm -hmm. I would say, what the devil are you doing? And the student what? Association, well, you have had and the student association represents the students. They represent yes. the voices. They're voted on. And, and so what we need then, to have is, is the students stand up to their association and say, we don't agree with this. Once they did that, it was too important an issue not to put it for referendum. If you, let's say, 17 to 2, student council has decided, you have no business deciding this because a whole lot of students go and polish That's shoes right. to raise money. So procedurally, I would have said, you bunch of idiots, you should now put this to vote. Mm -hmm. And even if 50% students respond to your question, to your referendum, you at least have some data to work with. But for 17 students to make this de decision is nothing short of Stalin era. It's terrible. And if I was teaching at Carlton, they would have heard it. Hmm. At well, the cost of losing my job, I would have said, go ahead, fire me. It's worth it. Well, it's a serious ethical it's, issue it's I'm seeing it. here. Before we go for our next break, let's go now to Beam on Line 5. Hello, you're on the air. Uh, hi. Uh, my comment is that <clears throat> Carlton has a huge number of ethnic minority students who are adversely against the liberal Western values, mm -hmm. and they hate Canadian values. So they just wanted to impose, they're just they're taking it on white mail. It's really disgusting. Pima, I want to address that when we come back, okay? So don't go away. We'll return after this. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello again, and welcome back to Viewpoints on the Line. Now, we heard a comment from Pima, and this is what he said in essence, that when you look at some campuses, for instance, Carleton, you've got a lot of um, different cultures coming on the campus, and he's suggesting that they bring an agenda with them. Now, that's an issue I want our guests to address here, because, yeah. and, and here's my position on this. I don't believe it's the majority of them coming in, and this is where it, I get going, because it paints every immigrant, and this society is founded on immigration, but it paints every immigrant with the same brush. In case you haven't noticed, all three of us here are visible minorities, and none of us agree with this nonsense with the cystic fibrosis. Most of the immigrants coming into this country, from what I understand, even in doing viewpoints on the line, do not support such changes. You find that there's a, a small minority of immigrants coming into this country, 
special interest groups that are pushing an agenda that larger society is buying into, and I'm just going to let the two of you take it away from there. We run, in, in, in Brampton, I, I run a, a, an agency that serves close to 100,000 newcomers. The Brampton the, Neighborhood the, Resource that's Center. That's right. And, and the first and foremost uh, concern for newcomers coming in who are the strength and the future of Canada is to contribute to the economic economy, yes. to come in yes. and work, to be a part of Canada. The majority of people probably 99.9% .9 of people who come to Canada want a better future to contribute to this country. They have so much to offer. And when we go off on these tangents by some uh, minority that, that's basically trying to voice discontent, what it does is, is it, it plays to the counterproductivity of what people are representing. If you talk to many second generation Canadians who are visible minor minorities, it's probably more of a visible majority nowadays, you know, who mm -hmm. I grew up with and so mm -hmm. forth, we just, we're just Canadian. You know, yeah, we we, we Canada. We, yeah, and, and and we want we want to. And one of the reasons that we're here is because we, we pride ourselves in having one of the best healthcare systems in the world, and that means that we take care of everybody regardless of their disease and for people yes. to politicize cystic fibrosis or to or to make it about you know this anti-white male agenda this oh, is just absolutely please. ridiculous and sickening yes. and, and and they're taking something that's that's that that impacts children and and, and needs to be put out there and we need to contribute like to we it. heard from this grandmother that called in with two of her grandchildren yeah, yeah. suffering with this it's devastating yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think we have to be very careful first of all i think it time has come that we stop using these terms visible and invisible minorities. Mm -hmm. We are all Canadians. I agree we we're all Canadians, but another issue I want to address with you uh, is... Uh, just just yes. me, because I think that's very divisive. Because we are considering color of the skin and facial features. But we don't want to be a nation walking on eggshells either. No, we don't want to, but we yes. don't want to label people also. I don't want to be called South Asian, Canadian. I want to be called Canadian. So allow me to be one. So don't please label me. Don't tell me who I am. I want to be Canadian, so recognize that. That's my biggest beef yes. with some of these bureaucratic language, and you, even UN has said, stop using it. And oh, some on another show, I heard one of the guests saying, oh, I'm very offended by this. I said, well, you get offended too fast. I am offended mm -hmm. by you calling me that. So now who's going to win here? But I think with the minority groups, we have to be careful. There are certain members within the minority mm -hmm. group. It may yes, not be entirely right. the minority group. It it's may not. be few who are highly politicized, and who may have even come to Canada, I, I, I will even go this far with an agenda. Their agenda is not what my colleague is saying to contribute, to be yes. educated, uh, to participate in what this society has to offer and help to build this country and to improve it. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I truly believe, are out there who have an agenda. I think you're right. Let's go now to Vanessa on line six. Hello, Vanessa. You're on the line. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Vanessa. Hey, um, I have a question for the gentleman on the panel. A little bit earlier in the program, you had said that um, about 20 or 30 years ago, there used to be a clear Canadian identity, and currently that's, that identity has been um, kind of put to the wayside or confused by this um, the, the political correct correctness, quote-unquote, movement. Um, I'd like to, I'd be interested in hearing a description of what that Canadian identity used to be. Good question, Vanessa. The Canadian Anthony. identity that I grew up on was one of solidarity. It, it, it's a land for us struggling um, to be a nation, a relatively new nation on the global scene, of, of, of a place where people could come um, in terms of having freedom, to be able to be free of a lot of the oppression and or persecution that they were maybe facing in some of their homelands. Mm -hmm. um, so that doesn't mean that, you know, when you come here, you know, uh, that we, we, we basically say, well, we're going to just become a land of every single division um, or, or, or spe specific interest that we bring with us. But, but Canada is, 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 it's our flag, it's our national anthem. Mm -hmm. There's been some talk about Respect singing. for the charter. Yeah, there, there, the, the respect charter. for our charter. For there's the Constitution. Been, yeah, but there's been yes, some talk exactly. about singing charter our national freedom. anthem yes, in yes. other languages. Yeah. In other languages yeah. at the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sitting and, here going, and, this and, is and, absolutely and, ridiculous. And not only that, okay. identity is also that you develop a very strong sense of belonging. You develop very so strong sense of loyalty. I have that. Yes. I feel Canadian. Mm -hmm. Now, you should ask me, where is it coming from? I would say it's in my heart. Good. I feel Good. Canadian. I would give life for this country. And, and I, I don't look backwards. I came, I made a choice, here is my loyalty. Well said. You know, so it is a feeling that you develop 
of loyalty, of sense of belonging. Symbolism is there. So, what is Canadian identity? Look within yourself. Yes, well said. We're going to move on to our second topic now. Wow, take a look at this one, the headline. Electronic isolation darkening virtual horizon. Well, th this one's a heartbreaker because here you have a kid in Miami, okay, 19-year-old university student. Well, he commits suicide on the internet, had a webcam. The saddest part of this, he was being urged on to commit suicide, and he did. More and more we're seeing headlines regarding the internet, people that are addicted to this thing, and they seem to have lost touch with reality. For example, we all remember the story, well, some of you uh, may have known about it, most of you I would think, with Barrie, Ontario, where a teenager was too hooked to the Xbox, according to his parents, so they stepped in like they should have and banned him. Well, he was so upset that he ran away from home. Tragically enough, he did not make it. He was discovered, unfortunately, wasn't alive, and it was deemed an accident, something very sad indeed. We've also seen cases of where people committed suicide over being bullied on the Internet. I sad. I mean, right now we're hearing articles where people, specialists are saying there's a trend that we're discovering here. Some are saying let's medicalize it because it's become an addiction like any other addiction. Mm -hmm. And when you start that too young, mm -hmm. it does something from what I'm understanding to the brain. And these kids lose a sense of reality. They're in some psychosis. Yes, psychosis they, they, because it's a psychosis. psychotic you, because it's a psychosis that you lose in you are no more in touch with reality. In reality, and that's what it is. Yeah, and that's yes. what it is, and that's happening. Yeah, and I think if you, if you read uh, Dr. Gabor Mate's book, um, Hold On to Your Kids, he directly addresses this phenomenon. It's more than a trend. It's becoming a pandemic in our society yes, of an emotional flatlining of young people. Um, in the old days, we had TV. But what happens is p kids would be, quote, addicted to TV. They would watch it, but there was very low interaction. They would just take the information in. When they would get sick of it, yes. they would leave. But now what happens Different. is in the MSN generation, um, what's going on is they're taking it in but putting it out. And, but they're not dealing with necessarily a real time person. They're, they're dealing, and, and, and if you look at the, the, the types of conversations, it's like, hey, you know, yeah, no, yeah, and, and it's, gr it's called grunting. And uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Gab uh, Mate talks about this um, in, in, in his book, Hold On To Your Kids. And, and one of the things, um, in terms of the Sesame Street generation, what that did uh, is, is, it, is as, a, as, a, as a society um, with our neurological pathways, and Dr. Fraser Mustard has done a lot of uh, work on this in terms mm -hmm. of um, the, the, the brain development in, in early childhood, where in the short snippets, yes, it gets the attention, but it reinforces short alleles in the brain. And it's been demonstrated that later in life, especially as we get into our adolescent and, and, and our young adulthood, it, it, it's longer alleles that are more consistent with productive human development. The, 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 the reinforcement of short alleles is, is counterintuitive. It leads to things like youth violence and so mm -hmm. forth. And they found this in, in, in brain development, especially with some of our more high-risk, at-risk young people in society. Yes. And, so, and so by by kids playing into these the video games um, in a pandemic way and and the MSNing and their short conversation spans yes. and emotional discontent it's 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 impacting and it's changing the nature of the brain many and, times and, in a dangerous way we're going to have to go for a break now but for you watching we'd like to hear what your comments are on the trend that we're seeing with our youth today and not only a comment but if you if if you want to call in because we don't know who you are and maybe you have a child that's having an issue with this well the people that we have on today it's not just only a viewpoint but they're also experts in the field of education in dealing with youth. So give us a call. We're going to go for a break. We'll return after this. Stay tuned. Hello again and welcome back to Viewpoints on the Line. We're talking about, well, the electronic age and sadly enough, sometimes a high price is to pay. Like we're talking about this instance of a Miami teenager who killed himself on the internet while he was being urged on by viewers. Now, one other thing, there's a movie on, and, and I certainly don't want to advertise this movie, but it, it's just how disgraceful it, it shows up how human nature can be. It was a movie, so I'm not going to say the name of the movie, but what it featured was a website. It was an investigative type movie. And on this website, people were invited to log on, and you had this psychopath that was actually take, you know about that movie, I'm oh, seeing cool. you nodding, killing people. And the thing is, the way he set it up, the more people that visited that site, the quicker that person died. 
And yes, it was a movie, but it was amazing how the movie depicted how human nature could be where millions of people were visiting that website, hastening the death of this person. But it seemed like a complete nightmare. But when you see a story like this come in the news, mm -hmm. where a kid is actually committing suicide on the internet, being urged on by onlookers, what have we come to? We want to hear your thoughts on that. Let's go now to you, Louise, on line five. Hi, Louise. You're on the line. Hi, thank you. I do not have a cell phone. I do not have a computer. Mm -hmm. I'm 52 years old. And I'm trying to decide who I would need to talk to so frequently that they had to be able to get me. Louise, uh, I'm glad you called in with that because it leads us into a very interesting discussion. The age that we live in. Okay, and, and I'm going to be honest, even the computer age, doing the work, for instance, if you're in the media, and, and, and you could say the same thing in education, mm -hmm. it's a networking issue where the world today is functions around this. Speed is an I issue. Cannot, speed is an issue, speed and I cannot an imagine issue. because I, I also do columns for Metro News and Front Page Magazine. I cannot imagine going back to an era where we didn't have the internet so we'd have to every time run down to the library, run down to government buildings to literally dig up the proper information in order to write a story and then mail it out. Today, in today's age, the way we're living here, it, it's virtually impossible to exist now without the internet. Mm -hmm. And Louise talked about the cell phone. I want to hear what your thoughts are on that too because you're dealing specifically with emergency kids sometimes yeah, where you need that cell phone. It's become a marketing age. Um, if you talk about pharmaceuticals, there's a lot of people who are depressed. They need pharmaceuticals to help with their depression, but we're over marketing to the population at wise because that's, that's how the pharmaceutical companies are going to recover their costs. The same thing with technology. Technology is a useful uh, product. We do, I believe we yes. do need it, but we're over marketing. Balance. We're, we're over marketing to the degree that young people are losing their lives for iPods. We've had two kids well in, the la in less than 12 months who have been murdered in Brampton for the, their the, iPods. Yes, this yes. is getting absolutely yes, ridiculous. Right. And if you ask me, the manufacturing companies, the same way that they should be held responsible if they produce their guns and then, then people are, are killed from the crime of their gun, there should be some liability for the manufacturing company because they're putting the product out there and it should yeah. be part you of the liability. Th that's a big issue you're talking about here, but do you really believe the onus is on the creators of these electronic no, items? No, no, I, you I, see, don't. I can't say I that. Don't. No, you see, this we live in a free market so what yes. all are we going where what happened to some kind of a self-discipline same thing and with junk food it's killing people yeah, yes. we can't some uh, cars are killing people from fumes so are we going to ban those i mean we can get quite ridiculous on this well, argument. They banned pintos well, when pintos were killing but, but, people but, but, pintos, well, but they were defective cars yeah they were they defective and that's money. different they put yes. the engine where it shouldn't have but there's been. choice here no there's no choice. you see in case of pinto mm -hmm. the car was in the uh, the no, I agree with the, the Pintos, bag. but in the case yeah. of the iPods and the computers, yeah. there's Pinto, choice here. Pinto, the, actually the manufacturing company, for, they knew that it's going to cause problems. They knew it, but they wanted to save X number of dollars and said, let it go. Their mm -hmm. engineers had warned them it was a huge ethical issue. And until that woman was killed in New Jersey when she was hit from behind. And yes. the engineers had said that if the car gets hit from behind, it will That's catch right. fire. Sure enough, I know the story of Pinto. But you know, we mm -hmm. have forgotten what it is to have little bit of self-censorship. What is wrong in telling yourself before the big government comes with a shovel and say, thou shalt not do this, telling and yourself, that's and that's They're what is happening. That do you know why it is happening? Because we have stopped telling ourselves that maybe this is going to hurt me, and we have stopped telling our children that maybe it is time to sit down and have a chat. Where are you going with this? But we have, lo but we well have, long but we have longitudinal yes. um, neurological studies that are showing that overuse of computers are damaging the brains oh, of our oh, young oh, people no, today. That, that yes. having said, no, <laughs> Microsoft I, should be be, be uh, paying some of our health no, costs. No, no, no my, micro, you don't have to buy it. This is like mm -hmm. saying the child Choice. is abuse, obese. Who buys the chips? Who brings the pretzels? Who yes. buys fatty milk? You. Don't buy it. Well, if you, yep. I, I, I don't buy a cell phone. Look, I, I have what kind of jobs I have. I don't have a cell phone because there are times I don't want to be reached. Leave now we're going to have to go for a break now. We want to hear from you. So we're going to be back to you after this. Stay tuned. Hello again and welcome back to Viewpoints on the Line. Still talking about some of the downsides of the electronic age. Once again, yes, it's a great benefit to all of us, but there is a downside. And we want to hear your thoughts on the subject matter today. Let's go now to you, Jack, on line four. Hello, Jack. You're on the line. Go ahead, Jack. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. 
good. Uh, my problem is, is there's just too much, um, too much information that's uh, given out. There's no uh, security codes or anything for like uh, Facebook. Is as you know, is probably one of the biggest things going on right now. Yes. You know what, you got a good point there, Jack, and I'm glad you brought that up. And the reason why is an incident also that happened on Facebook is also mentioned in this article. There was a kick a ginger day. Imagine that very right recently. Right and only last Thursday it was declared. And in the matter of fact, if you look at Calgary, this article is talking about 13 kids that were suspended for joining that bullying because, unfortunately, this kick a ginger day was based on bullying redheads. Yeah. And these kids were getting beaten up as a result of that. This was a Facebook venture. Appalling. Well, there needs to be, there needs to be some recourse. Uh, the Internet is a great tool. I think we need it. Technology is a great thing. We need it. The problem is, like anything in life, it gets misused a lot. Yes, it does. I, it gets used in, in, in universities. There's, there's, there's harassment and bullying against professors and teachers. Um, people, like, you, you can get 10% of the crap on, 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 on the internet, and, and people can have their careers ruined for this. And this is, so we need to really look at this. Because I want the two of you to give some tips in a moment, but we're this. running out of time, and I want you to give tips in a moment. But let's first go to Petra on line mm -hmm. one. Hi, Petra. You're on the line. Hello? Hi, Petra. Go ahead. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, Internet is wonderful. For me, it is, too. I'm in my 30s, you know, that kind of thing. So I was around when basic programs were out, you know, Commodore 64s and floppy disks, and nobody had one, um, dial telephones and stuff. But I think kids are bored. They I think are. they're they just, are. What, whatever happened to getting out there and playing Frisbee in the park, walking the neighbor's dog, or raking the leaves, shoveling the snow, or baking something with somebody? Petra, well, well said. Mm -hmm. And if you two can keep it as short as possible, because I want to address what Petra's concern is here. And I'm going to give you a very quick story, and it's personal. I'm going to get it from my son there. A couple of years ago, he was on the Internet playing a game. It's one of those group games mm -hmm. where he had to catch a boat, a ship. And I asked him to do a chore, and his answer was, no, no, i got to catch a ship. I said, no, you're going to do the chore first, and then you can catch the boat. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I have to wait a half an hour before I catch this boat. My friends are going to go. I said, no, you have to wait. But that, to me, as a parent, what it did was serve as a warning sign. Mm -hmm. With our children today as parents, we've got to look out. So after that, I became the nuisance parent, <laughs> in his face kind of a parent. <laughs> Let's see if, if he's in the middle of a game, if I can say, well, hey, what about this? Okay, you got to get your homework done now. You got to do this. And to this day, I don't have any problems. He'll put it down and move. But it took conditioning because I recognized there was an issue here. And parents need to beware because kids are slipping through the cracks. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking like in this article mm -hmm. in sometimes very violent ways. Mm -hmm. So quick tips for parents from the two of you. Very quick now. I would refer people to uh, Dr. Gabor Mate's book, uh, which is called Hold On To Your Kids. He directly addresses this subject matter that um, as parents, we need to be more engaged with our kids. He, he has kind of how to do that. And he looks at the emotional flatlining and the whole concept of bored young people today. Yes. It's, it's bang on, but it has to do with brain development. And Dr. Fraser Mustard's done a lot of work on this. He's probably the... And it's okay if our kids yeah. get mad at us, Alexandra? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, what you did with your son was not conditioning. It was parenting. Okay. Parents must mm -hmm. be parents. And they should not be so worried my child won't love me. This is not a mad, love. Okay? Yeah. It's to be so expected. It's fine. It's, it, it, yes. it's fine. So you little upset, so let him be upset. It, it'll, mm -hmm. be, it'll work itself out. And as I said, a little bit of self-censorship and a little bit of discipline and what's right and what's wrong. Why does this child come home and go directly to the computer? Yeah. But why, why do you allow that? It's complete I mean, disengagement, yes, and, it's complete and, the, disengagement. And, and the relationship, their human relationships right. have, have broken down. And if, if you, as a parent, go to your child and you want to engage with them, they say no. And the, the, the kid mm -hmm. who they were at school with all day, who were their peers, that's who they go to on MSN. But when you look at how their interaction with MSN goes, it's basically what we call grunting. And, yes. and, and so, so there's this. They don't want to engage in deep relationships, well said, and that's you what the problem must is. Must go for a break now. We'll return to you on the phone lines after this. Stay tuned. Hello again, Beautiful. and welcome back to Viewpoints on the Line. Let's go now to you, Jessica, on line one. Hi, Jessica, you're on the line. Hello. Hi, Jessica. Hi, I think that um, parents should be more involved in their children's lives. 
Jessica, a lot of Jessica, we don't know who you are, but I'm going to ask you this question. How old are you? You sound young. I'm 19. 19. Great to hear Thank from you. you. And you're saying at 19 that parents need to be involved in their children's lives. I couldn't agree with you more. And it's wonderful to hear from a young person because, as you were saying, Alexandra, mm -hmm. it's not about being friends to your it's kids. And you were also saying that you have basically laid down the rules in your own classroom at Brock. And it works. The same it students works beautifully. at first may not be happy, but they come back and to see. thank you in the end. Jessica, thanks for calling in. Michael on line two. Hi, Michael. You're on the line. Go ahead, Michael. Looks like we lost Michael. But we don't have much time left to the show, but I'll tell you what, it's just going to be a quick sound bite on the last topic. This is a topic I'm going to be inviting back Alexandra to talk about more at length. And Britain, here it is, British law allows courts to intervene to prevent forced marriages. Once again, it's a cultural issue that we're facing in the West, and let's face it, it's we're having trouble grappling with these it, things. It's cultural and economic. It, there are two factors here. It's not just cultural. Yes. They, they always want to marry you off to someone that brings better status. Yes. So there's not just culture, it's also little Marxian principle of... So do you say it's about time that British no. law has... Uh, you know what? Mm -hmm. Canada had laws on marriage. Britain has laws on marriage. The United States have laws on marriage. Other countries have laws on marriage. Yes. I suggest that when people come to Canada, Britain, the United States, they abide by the laws on marriage that exist in that country, just as if a Canadian was to go to any other country, we would have to abide by their laws on marriage. I'm just sick Work for of, you uh, in um, some of these countries and see what you put up with. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> you said, gee, this for the good of the world. But you're okay. protecting these ladies in some of these oh, cases. Absolutely. I mean, some once again, we is, need to talk about sometimes some the difference horrible. between arranged and, and forced. And sometimes I wonder what is wrong with these parents. Hmm. Don't you look what you are giving your daughter to? She has to put up with that for the rest of her life. What were you thinking? Wow. I just want to ask these So you parents. think it's about time that but British you see, law... I want to know why anybody wants to get married. But <laughs> That's because you're not married. <laughs> hey, but you see, I've been married for over see, two Christine, decades. That's all I'm going to say, it, and I love marriage. It shouldn't go as far as the courts. It shouldn't have to go as far as the courts. But when it does, it's sad that you have to be regulated by a court as far as your child is concerned. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Wow. <laughs> no, aren't you ashamed of yourself? But the thing is, as it is now, we're facing issues in the West on how do we even deal with some of these issues because they're deemed politically incorrect and we were talking during the break even when it comes to an issue like um, honor killings there are those that say oh there's nothing honorable about it we shouldn't be using it but the United Nations recognizes it that is term honor it's and it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's termed an anthropological, honor killing. anthropological exactly. sociological term yes I'm it is. not going to apologize but you see this That's whole issue is. of being offended mm -hmm. yeah has dominated mm -hmm. West, the West. Mm -hmm. There's a fear of offending certain special interest groups. Yeah. And who are the people suffering? We, we're seeing in this article those very women that might be in very abusive situations as a result of not arranged but a forced marriage, yeah. they're the ones but, also but, paying but the but price. You, but you see, Christine, sometimes it's not that they, they kill these girls on the killing. You know, sometimes they push these girls to suicides. That's right. wow. That we should also talk about. That she becomes so desperate, she has nowhere to go. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, what she's. She, she, my heart goes out to her. You see, you're it, very well versed in this area, Alexandra, I mean, because you worked for the United Nations as well, and you've countries. worked in six countries, so you've seen it simultaneously. You've seen some of this at work firsthand. Oh, I come from a country. But when we're talking about when we're talking about in Britain or Canada or, or North America or the States, we have our mores, our cultural norms that basically say you cannot yeah, kill somebody. Yeah, and 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 I don't I, I don't ca I don't I don't care which culture or which religion you have, mm -hmm. it is dishonorable to kill anybody for any reason at any time at any place if you come to it's Canada a or the States. Offense. There yes, you go. And that's where we should but draw we the do, lines. We do need to understand that within certain cultures there is an issue. Can we're gonna have to continue can, this because we're out of time. Can you imagine this girl yes. was killed in, in Mississauga. And somebody wrote an article. Another major and you issue. know, wait a minute. That they said we are going to Human Rights Commission. I would have said, get a life. And that's all the time we have. See you again <laughs> next time. I'm Christine Williams, and from all of us, thank you for watching.